Morning juniors, so uh, today we're going to carry on with our Christmas series. Um, this is going to be a sort of shortened version. If you want to get the long version, you need to come and join us in the hall. It's a lot of fun. Um, but uh, before we start, we'll just open in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we can uh, come together just to, to learn more about the events that preceded your birth. And uh, as we know that you've now been born, we just look at these wise men that came to worship you and just maybe unpack a little bit more about these wise men. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
goodwill to all the earth and peace divine. All of the earth rejoice, it's Christmas time. Right, so in fact, um, the Bible doesn't really say that there were three wise men. And we don't know whether they were kings, because, you know, the song says we three kings. But what we do know is that um, they were priests or, or um, scholars from the east, probably from Persia, and they studied the stars. And they knew that this star that they had seen wasn't just an ordinary star or a comet. It was something really special, and it had a great significance. For them, and so that, which is why they travelled, left left their home in the east, and travelled west towards Bethlehem, which is the way the star was leading them. And with them, they took three gifts: they took um, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And these um, gifts represented wealth, because it was the wealth that they were bringing with them as gifts for Jesus. But these um, gifts also have a much more significant meaning. The gold is 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 for a king. Frankincense is a kind of perfume and myrrh is something which which you'd almost put on on bodies to bury them um, and so they traveled from Persia um, following the star all the way until they got to Jerusalem and this is where they came a little bit unstuck in their journey because as you can imagine here we are we are three wise men we are dressed in our Persian clothes the Bible doesn't really say they were traveling on camels they might have been on horseback but they would have looked a little bit out of place. And immediately King Herod, who was the king at the time, got down to the fact that these three or four, we're not sure how many, because the Bible didn't say, but these gentlemen were here to worship a king. And they weren't here to worship Herod. And Herod was a very mean man. And so he called the wise men to him and he said, Listen, I believe you come here to worship the king. Um, do you know where you're going to find this king? And Herod's plan was actually to get the wise men to tell him where the baby Jesus was so that he could actually go and kill him because he didn't want someone becoming king once he wasn't there. Um, needless to say, the wise men kept going. And uh, what we must also understand is the wise men didn't arrive at the stable with the shepherds, but this was actually six months to two years after Jesus was born. Um, because they had been traveling across mountains, across rivers, um, all the way from Persia, which was not just a day's traveling away. They had been traveling for a long, long time. And when they got to the house, because now Mary and Joseph were staying in a house, and the, the toddler Jesus was there, and they presented Jesus with their gifts. But this is where God always has a plan 
because God knew Herod's heart, and he knew that Herod was not up to any good. And so he warned the wise men and Joseph to actually go home on a different route. And it seems in the Bible, it almost seems it was the exact same day and night that the wise men arrived, that the very next day Joseph and Mary left and they went off to Egypt. And if you remember, Egypt was where Jesus' ancestors had been slaves for many years. And now Jesus has gone there to actually remain safe and out of the clutches of Herod. Because what Herod did is he sent out his soldiers and they killed all the Jewish children under the age of two. And if Jesus had been in Jerusalem at the time, or in Bethlehem at the time, um, he more than likely would have been killed by Herod's soldiers. But because God was keeping him safe, um, they lived in Egypt for a number of years before coming back to Bethlehem. The story of Christmas, Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. Ah. As was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah, not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews' star first appeared. Oh God! And then King Herod told the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did. And then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> when they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We'll take it where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. Um, some other key things to remember. What we can pick up from this um, journey of the Magi, or the wise men as we call them, there's, there's three things we can apply to our life. And they are basically three key attitudes that we should have if we are searching to follow Jesus. And the first one is that the wise men had an attitude of urgency. They were Gentiles. They didn't have the scriptures. They didn't read the Bible. They hadn't met Jesus or God. 
they, they were from a totally different country, and yet God gave them a star. And the moment they saw that star, they made up their minds to follow that star. And they didn't give up until they had actually reached their destination. And along the way, they must have made some sacrifices. They must have had some hardships. Traveling in those days was not easy. They didn't have airplanes or cars. Um, and they weren't just passing through. They were on a mission to find this child, which they wanted to worship. Because they wanted to find this new king that was going to be born. Um, do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to meet him? Do you want to? What is the priority that you give to knowing Jesus? Um, and someone once told me a bit about the story of this gentleman who had a train set which was passed down to him and his brothers. And eventually he had it and he had it in his home. And he spent hours fixing it, sanding it, and tweaking it to get it back to its original condition. Um, and he was driven by this goal to get this train set working. He used to come home early, skip meals, and spent hours and dollars to get this train back into tip-top condition the way it was. And then the whole family could enjoy the train as long as they didn't touch it. Now, is that our relationship with Jesus? Do we, do we just not touch? We don't get involved? We, just, we know he's there, but it's just for sure. Um, we need to have that kind of attitude that the wise men have. Do we really have that attitude of joy? When they got to find Jesus, they had absolute joy at the end of their search that they'd got there after the months or even years that they'd been traveling. They finally found this young child that they needed to worship and they presented him with their gifts. Are we going to have that fresh joy this Christmas? This has been an extremely difficult year and yet at the end of this year, our King has been born in our hearts again we need to come with joy and realize that through all the trials and tribulations Jesus was born to save us so no matter what happens to us we know that we can get right with God and they came with an attitude of worship they found the child and they bowed down and they worshiped him these were three of the most extremely wise men from the East the Magi and yet they were bowing down and worshiping a child of about two years old, maybe a little bit, a little bit, a little bit younger, um, but because this was the purpose of the journey. And, and so um, the question I want to leave you with at the end of this message is what is your purpose this Christmas? Is it about just being with family or getting as many gifts as you can? Or will you embrace the fact that at this Christmas, Jesus came? to make something special of you because you have the ability to be the best you that you can be and Jesus is there to help you all the way. So where are you headed now? Where's your life journey taking you? It makes a huge difference, an eternal difference. So let's approach Jesus this Christmas with a sense of urgency, joy and worship that the Magi showed all those thousands of years ago. Have an awesome day and hopefully we'll see you in the hall next week. Cheers.